Hey, where's Jordan? We're trying to put these beams up and I can't find him. Oh, what are you doing? Oh. <laughs> Gyms are closed. <laughs> Gotta get it in. All right. Hey gang, today is beam installation day. I know we said on a previous video we were gonna take this one out first, but after thinking about it last night, uh, I feel like we're working in a cage here with these walls. So I thought if we get this beam up, we can take this wall down and that'll give us more room on this side to get this bad boy out of here. It's good thinking. And then it's also kind of a mental boost. We have one beam up. So let me show you what I did over here. This beam is three two by 12s. That beam is two LVLs and we'll get into that later. So I laid out the beams here and on the far wall. And then I drove a nail in the top of this top plate in line with this line and I, I popped the chalk line all the way across. And that's gonna be my cut line for all these joists. Yeah, let me try and get the chalk line here. It's just... Can you see it right here, the blue? Yep. It's a little faint, but then I extended them with a pencil here and on all of them, on, on the face of all of them. And we made a little block for this right here. So the offset on my saw, offset is the distance from the blade to the edge of the shoe is just over an inch and a half. <clears throat> so I have my speed square clamped to the joist. That way I don't have to have two hands up there. I can have another hand free. And I'm just gonna make a cut straight up. And then because these two rafters are still connected over here, I made this cut. And notice how it's at an angle. What that's gonna do is, as I complete this cut, this will fall away and won't pinch the blade. Uh, if this were straight or even angled the other way, then this board is trapped and could pinch the blade. So this way, my chances are better that it won't pinch the blade. So let's fire up the vacuum and get our glasses on and, and cut all these uh, joists. Nice. All right. Why don't you hop up there and take a look and see if I, uh, if I missed one. All right. See how it looks. Should be a nice straight line. Acceptable? Yeah, it looks pretty good. <laughs> Is it perfect? <laughs> yeah, it looks nice. It does. All right, we're ready for this beam. So let's go outside. We're gonna check our three two by 12s check them for straightness and everything. We're gonna put the crown up. Hey, we're outside, we're ready to cut our first one. This is the top of our crown. We've cut, we've marched it to length, 153 inches. This is a 16 footer, no, I'm sorry, 14 footer. And then we used our Bosch electronic angle finder to, to get the pitch of the roof. And we just transferred that on there because we have to cut this to clear the roof sheathing. I did speak about that uh, with our engineer and we both understood that we had to cut this so he sized these accordingly. Uh, we're not weakening this member that much by doing this but we have to do it to clear the roof. So let's get this cut. We were doing a little test fit with our beam. When we went to tip it up it's actually hitting these nails that are protruding from the roof so I'm going to cut them off real quick. Perfect. Yeah, it looks real good. Now we can get an idea of what our joists are doing. Yeah, and they're actually yep, that down. One's little, that one's a little low. This one a is little, up. A little high. Um, oh, you know what though? I can actually get some good pull yeah. on it though. And we can get a two by four in here and use that as a fulcrum and, and, yeah. and climb down. Right. This one's ready to go up, but before we do that, there's one little trick we want to show you. If we put this hanger on here like that, we're gonna have a little bulge 
in the drywall. So we're gonna have a hanger here and one over here. To eliminate that, we're gonna use our planer. And we're gonna scoop out a, a few inches on the end here of each one. And that way the bottom of the hanger will be flush with the bottom of the joist. Yes sir, let's show them. All right. See that from the yeah see how nice that is right there yep all right, so let's hit them all just cool. real quick all right that only took a couple of minutes to do that but it's going to save us 30 minutes or more in drywall work by not trying to float this out so much so we're ready to stand this up and i'm just going to drive a couple of nails in it to hold it and we're going to go cut the other two So another little tip whenever you're cutting tapers or like if you're making stakes and you have to cut a point in the end of a two by four, if you start on the edge here, your guard's gonna get, get hung up on the side. But if you start on the end, it's much better. And then your, your guard doesn't get caught up and pinched. Go ahead and get our post in first. Okay. It's not going anywhere, but let's do it. All right. What are we talking? What are we talking about? We're the post. Gonna, the engineer wants uh, a stud pack. That's familiar. Why is that familiar? <laughs> That's actually where our name came from. He wants two here, two two by fours here. Okay. And he wants two two down here. So let's measure and cut all those and get them in place, and then we'll attach that. are in all right so our next step is to fasten those together the beams all right all three two by twelves the engineer wants nails and your engineer should be specifying the bolting pattern or the nailing pattern what was this one Jordan eight inches on center mm -hmm. staggered each side uh, maintain minimum one inch from the edge so eight inches staggered. I know this is 16, so I'm just gonna go two and two, two and two. And then I'll probably have to reach up over and catch the backside. And then we'll slide the whole thing over against here and put up our hangers. All right, we're ready to start nailing these off. But before we do that, uh, we had to cut off about 16 inches on these, Jordan, I yeah. think. And so what we always do when, when we're cutting a, a piece of wood like that, we, we cut off the worst end. In other words, if there's a big knot in one end or a split, we cut that off. So we were taking the sledge right here. And after we had nailed off one side, we would just bang it with a sledge a couple times to get the beams nice and tight. Some of the screws, or I'm sorry, the nails would be poking out sometimes, but we just got the framing hammer and nailed them right back into place, so. Yeah, when they sucked up. Right, so that thing is super secured. Why don't we get the sledge and we'll tap it tight to the joist. Okay. And then we'll put our screws in the ends to anchor it. Okay. Move on us. Okay, sweet. I'm gonna use these GRK screws just to tie the beam down to our wall so it doesn't move when we're installing the hangers. I think
think I need a few more screws. <laughs> no, that's, that's never going anywhere. All right, hanger time, right? Yes, sir. All right. All right, here's our first hanger. We've got our board here on our bottle jack, and we're using that to push up on the joist. It takes the load off of the wall and puts it on the hanger. And now I'm gonna nail it off with the palm nailer. And then what we're doing, we're leaving the bottom face of this joist lower than the bottom of this. Because these aren't flush, it's just the nature of the product. So that way the drywall will span from the bottom of this joist to the bottom of this future joist and just clear this so it's nice and flat. I got my glasses, the palm nailer. Let's get it done. to show you something come out of uh what we're in time lapse yeah so see that yeah so that that means what we're doing is we're taking the weight off of this wall and now we're transferring it to the beam by lifting those joists with our jack go back and watch our other beam video where we we put up what were they 16 footers yeah they're big boys yeah big boys and same thing happened so that's exactly what you want to see All right guys, so we have our joist hangers up, but we've run into a little bit of a problem where now the joists don't need to go up, but they need to come down. So our temporary wall is currently in our way now. We are unable to pull the joists down. We, uh, we're trying to get leverage with our two by four right here and pull them down, but our temporary wall is unfortunately doing its job and uh, we can't pull them down. So what we're gonna do right now is we're just gonna knock out these two um, temporary studs right here with a sledgehammer. We've got a strong back in the attic that's holding up the joists So it's gonna be okay for us to be able to remove these pieces of wood right here in order to get these boards down If we have to remove more we will but we're just gonna start with these two right now So I'm gonna go ahead and take the sledgehammer and just knock these out And the whole wall moved <laughs> Let me stand on it. Okay. Why don't you hit it back the other way? Okay <laughs> Oh, there you go. Jeez. That'll work. All right. Let's just do that with this one. All right. That's the ticket right there. Yeah. And now you just pull them, just pull them down by hand. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. okay. Like I said, the gyms are closed, so. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so now we've got our two by four here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and stick it right up in here use the joist ahead of it as a uh, pivot point. Yep. Ready? Yep. Yeah, it's coming down. Yeah. All right. We can work with that. Nice. All right. That is all the joist hangers on this side. So let's get this wall down. We screw this top plate to the joist, so I think I got the drill oh, right there, Jordan. Yeah, I got a torch bit. Yep. Let's get this temporary wall down and see how this thing looks. All right, guys, so we got our beam installed. It looks absolutely incredible. We love the way that it looks and the way that it turned out. Uh, remember that we planed the edges of the joist. That way our drywall will be flush. Looking at it right now, I think that it's gonna turn out incredible. We have our temporary wall down. It came down smooth. The installation went pretty smooth, honestly. It really did. We didn't have any issues. Nope. Which, it's um, if you, got, if you know, you know. That's because we planned and planned. And that's it, true. It, that, it took a long time to get there, but once we got there, right. it went up fast. It went up fast, and now we're done. But as you can see right here, we've got a big mess on our hands, insulation on the floor, nails everywhere. And you know how we like to do it here on the Stud Pack channel. We clean as we go. We keep a clean work job, workspace. So we're going to go ahead and sweep all this up, vacuum it up. That way we can have a clean work site for uh, this beam takedown.
Right, that's next. Yeah, that is next, and uh, maybe we'll get some lunch too. Are you gonna let me eat today? Uh, I haven't. I haven't gotten there yet. Okay. <laughs> All right, gang, we've cleaned up, we've fueled up, and now we're ready to cut up. We're gonna make another mess. So my first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get my blade right through here and cut the connection between this beam and these top plates. I put our jack post here just so that this wouldn't come down and pinch the blade when I get through. <laughs> and look what it did. That's fine. That's what it's supposed to do. So let's cut those and we'll get our jack out of the way and put the weight back on the temporary wall. Yeah. Butter. So easy with that blade. <laughs> all the cuts with the sawzall. We we freed this beam up from the framing. I can even just smooth it by hand. Yeah. yeah. And now we've got a, a tie down strap over the top of it and we're coming over this joist. So I'm going to pull it off and I'm going to lower this in, hold it with the strap and Jordan's going to go free the other end and we'll bring it down together. All right, guys, we got that beam in the dumpster. Our next step is to remove this old wall from here to my right. And we, we put this two by four in there to simulate our new corner post. We're gonna fill this corner with our two by four stud pack and that's gonna hold up our beam. And then we're also gonna leave this paneling attached on the other side. And then once we get this cut, once we get this installed, We'll just trim it off here flush. So let's cut the top plates and the bottom plates and get this wall out of our way. All right. Nice. Let's get that in the dumpster. Yep. our chalk line and cut those uh, joists off. Yep. All right, gang, same process here on this side that we did over there. We're gonna cut all these in a line with our new beam. So we're gonna throw you into a time lapse and here we go. Nice. Now we're ready to cut our LVLs. Two of them. Yep. Let's do it. That's a beam right there. Yep. You want to go put this one up? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Very much. Yeah. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we need that. Yep. Give me some love. Might have to use the sledge on this one, Dad. Yep. All right, guys, we just got our beam up here temporarily. We ran into a little problem that we're going to show you, and then we're going to explain to you how we're going to fix it. So this line represents the left-hand side of our double beam. So the beam will be in between my two fingers. But you can see we have a roof rafter right in the way. So all we're going to do I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna scribe the top of the roof rafter like that. We'll take this down, cut that roof rafter, and then it will sit on top of the new beam. Let's do it. Let's get it. That was nice. Fun. All right guys, so a little update on the on the beam installation. You saw us put this guy up just to test fit it and scribe our rafter up top. So we have our piece. We performed surgery on the rafter and it went great. We have our support piece. This two by four is gonna be uh, supporting the existing rafter just to take the load off of it until we get the beam in place. And you can see back, back there, that rafter we also had to cut and uh, dad just used a buzz saw and made a couple plunge cuts that one's connected to the fascia outside um but we're just going to use the beam and just kind of fit it into place and it should work out yep we just trimmed this piece we just trimmed this beam to fit so let's put it up again and yeah and if we had if we had if we have to add some blocking to tie everything back together easy easy right let's get it up all right So the rafter is sitting on our new beam. Yep, this rafter, we cut it, it's now sitting on the beam. It's hard, it's hard to see. Um, so now what we're trying to do is, is sit the roof load back on top of our new beam, sledgehammer it into place, move this two by four because it's in our way, so. Oh, it's on, Yep. nice. Dang. All right guys, so we just got done putting up the LVL beam and securing it with our fasteners. These are the fasteners that we used right here, the G these GRK fasteners, uh, rugged structural screws right there, in case you're curious on what we used. The spacing of the screws that you see above me is exactly what the engineer specified for us. They're gonna be an inch staggered and um, 18 on center, but we actually went 16 because when we are securing our beams like this, we always take into account where the joist hangers are gonna be and we never want the screws to interfere with the joist hangers. So we always take that into account because there's nothing worse than going to secure a joist hanger after the beam's in place, after it's sandwiched together and then you hit a piece of metal. Yeah. Um, that'll kill your day. So we're always looking out for that. Um, so now if you look above me right here, you will see that we have two two by fours spanning the gap in between our beams. The reason that we have those two by fours spanning that gap is because when we put up our LVL beam, there was actually, you wanna come over here and look at this, there was actually a gap right here um, in between the existing joists and our new beam. Now, code specifies that the minimum distance that that gap can be is an eighth of an inch. So what we wanted to do was- Ma Maximum. Maximum. So what we wanted to do was get two two by fours, span the gap, that way it's pushing against each other, creating, you know, that, um, I don't know, it's just tightening the, the gap right there between the joist, the joist and the beam. A spreader bar. A spreader bar, exactly. So now that we've got those in place, which was a challenge on its own, um, we are gonna go ahead and, and hang this thing up. We're gonna go ahead and use our joist hangers, just like you saw us do early in the video, probably throw it in time-lapse mode and get it done. So let's get to it. All right.
How you feeling? I'm okay. I'm beat, but I'm glad it's done. Wow. Big project. Great job. Yeah, that was awesome. So we just have to remove our top, our temporary top plate, our temporary bottom plate, and uh, clean up. Clean up. Job, day's not over till it's all clean, right? That's right. All right. And then tomorrow, we'll fill in here. Yep. Transfer our roof load to our new beams. Yep. And that'll be the majority of the framing on this one. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that manana, but for now, let's, let's clean up and get out of here, huh? Yep, right, I'm with you. Right, guys and that is going to be a wrap for today's project we have our beams up installed in place the only thing that's left is going to be this double joist hanger right above me and we also have to install some filler joists in between the two beams but the work site is clean the beams are installed everything went swimmingly um and what else dad we got to go back in the attic tomorrow transfer the roof load uh but we'll talk about that in the next video and also stay tuned for us cutting into this concrete you ready to cut more concrete we got to bring some <laughs> conduits, two of them down from the attic into this tile um, or into this concrete slab right here. And uh, that'll be really exciting. But as far as the beams go, we are done. Rough framing is almost completed. And if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to like it. Consider subscribing to the channel for more content. We are doing this entire kitchen remodel A to Z. So make sure if you enjoy the series, stay tuned for it. And we'll see you in the next one. See you in the next one. Nice